Seeds of Change, Believe in Our Legacy, uh, such an, an appropriate name for our campaign and our work because we have such a, a wonderful legacy of Blessed Sacrament, not only in our church and in our school. I meet people all over the state, wherever I go, they said, I, I was baptized at Blessed Sacrament Church, or I attended school there, or, I was married there. So much wonderful work has been done here um, that we have a legacy to really be proud of, and we are proud of it, and we're gonna continue it. And I think we've come to the point where we realize that in order to continue this legacy at Blessed Sacrament, we have to do some significant work on our, on our grounds and our buildings. Blessed Sacrament School and Church was not on this site. This was our playground site. There was a little white uh, wooden building over there where the priest house is now, and that was the church. Three sisters who lived at St. Vincent's uh, actually were the first three to establish the school. And um, Mother Stella Maris Bergen was a superior at uh, St. Vincent's at the time. And she was uh, a graduate of Catholic U in education and uh, quite an educator. And she more or less uh, supervised the establishment of, of Blessed Sacrament. Every morning when we would gather, the whole school would gather around the flagpole and we would sing, um, we would salute the flag, pledge allegiance to the flag, and then we would sing God Bless America. And then we would go in the classroom and have the rosary before we started school. And then we would put flowers in front of the Blessed Mother. And uh, sometimes when we would walk to school, which we had to do quite often from 54th to 44th, we um, would, you know, pick flowers along the way. You know, I was an altar boy at St. James, but over here, uh, they had a 6 a.m. mass on Sundays. And I would ride with uh, Bubba Reardon, from, he was also a St. Jameser. And um, I would walk down to his house on Foxhall, and we would ride over here at 6 a.m. mass. And um, then we would go have breakfast at the Crystal, and then we'd be at work at seven o'clock at the golf course. So I started coming here, and this, this church, you know, back then, that would have been 1965, 1966. This church was so much nicer than uh, St. James. You know, this was like walking into a cathedral back then. Many of the teachers who are here now went to school here. We have wonderful friends that we still have today. In fact, I went to lunch with two of my classmates last week. We had our first communion picture out, and we were looking over the first communion picture of all of our friends that we still have from being here at Blessed Sacrament. Going to the school here, it's just, it's just such a wonderful community of people, and um, the kids have just blossomed going to school with their friends and with the teachers and with the faculty, and I, I just couldn't imagine sending them anywhere else. Yeah. And it'll give you a, a sense of belonging. Yeah, it does. It does. Total That's sense true. of belonging. Mm -hmm. There was a lady one time that told me, and I can't mm -hmm. remember her name, we were watching some sporting event at Blessed Sacrament, and she leaned over and said, y'all just don't, talking about a bunch of us that were talking yeah. about the years gone by, mm -hmm. you have no idea how lucky y'all are yeah. to be a part of a, mm -hmm. a school like this where you can talk about the memories mm -hmm. and things like that. She said, I sure wish I had been a part of something like this. And then she said, well, I'm starting it now. I think that's what makes Blessed Sacrament such a special, unique place. It's because of the family atmosphere that's here. Um, you just feel it when you walk in the building. Um, I'm getting ready to start my 36th year here as a teacher, now administrator. And um, of course, I went to school here and I've seen the children that I teach now are bringing their children back. Um, it's funny how you walk into a classroom now and they're, oh, Miss Willoughby, my daddy said you taught him. And one of them will stand up and say, Miss Willoughby, did you teach my grandmother? Of course, I'm like, no, not yet. That's the beauty of the Catholic Church is we have to always blend the old with the new and remain relevant to what's happening. Uh, we have great traditions here at Blessed Sacrament. I love to see people come back and say, Father, I was in second grade here back in 1963, and, and um, you know, and these types of things. There's so much, so much good has been done on these grounds. I like the way that we incorporate our religion into our lessons. 
and it's not always all about like the textbook, like straight from the textbook. We also have like religion class and we get to learn about the life of Jesus and things like that. One time we were out of town at a function and um, a little girl had lost her grandmother and I said, no problem, I'll stay and you know, we'll find your grandmother, don't you? And she was bawling, she was pitiful. And um, the people that we were with just kind of moseyed on their merry way. They knew I was gonna stay with her, so they knew she was fine. But I looked at my child and I said, you go ahead with your friends. I know you wanna be with them. And she said, no, she needs us. I'm not leaving her. And I thought, whoa. You know, I, and I knew then and there that the values that we've been preaching in these aisles for so long in church and at school, it did sink in. Leaving Blessed Sacrament, I don't just consider myself a graduate of Blessed Sacrament, but it's in me. The values that were instilled in me by the teachers, by the nuns, by the priests, something that stayed with me and it's taken me, I take with me wherever I go. Um, not many southern cities in America have the Catholic foundation that Savannah does, and um, it's special to us and unique, and, and it's one that we need to pass to future generations. To me, Blessed Sacrament is the heart and soul of Savannah in a lot of ways, as the Catholic faith is. Um, Blessed Sacrament has so many alumni throughout the city of Savannah. I had a problem once with um, a real estate problem, and I had to call um, a broker at another firm, and he was from Blessed Sacrament. Then I had to call a, a judge. She was from Blessed Sacrament. Then I had to call another attorney in another office. They were from Blessed Sacrament. So, in essence, the person I was dealing with said, does Blessed Sacrament rule the world? I said, in Savannah they do. The work of the church is always, first and foremost, you know, bringing the grace of Jesus Christ, His teaching to His children, taking care of people. Whether we have buildings or not, that work will be done. Um, but we also need the facilities to do it well. And um, as I said, this is not a, uh, it's not just a want, it's a real need at Blessed Sacrament. Our students, our parents, our curriculum is so strong. And in the last few years, we have grown and grown from a school of 330 to a school of 450. So we are meeting the needs of the children. But recently, um, our building has limited us with what we can do curricular-wise. And once your curriculum is limited, you need to address the functionality of the building. Blessed Sacrament's been here a long time, um, and we have great education, great educators. Uh, we have a great program to, to bring our children up, educate them uh, faith-based and educationally in, in their growth in each grade. Um, but yeah, the, the facilities are definitely aging um, and it's something that, that every, everyone has to address at some point in time. We need additional classrooms in pre-K, K-1. We can't do that in the building we're in right now, so that's paramount. Um, efficiencies of our systems, our heating and air system. Um, it, you know, it, not only are we not um, creating a comfortable climate for the children, but um, in addition to that, there's a noise issue, um, you know, s s uh, lacks a sound buffer, and that impacts instruction. And when your building is impacting instruction, you need to address your building. So it is time that Blessed Sacrament um, address those needs. They need to update everything so the children can uh, uh, be, have the advantage of um, a lot better. I wouldn't say better education. You can get, get a good education if you got the right educators, but uh, the facilities would mean an awful lot. Well, first impression is, is uh, always gotta be great, and it's a challenge when you go to other schools and, and look at the new facilities and you come here and you got a 1958 model. This is a very small footprint, so it's gonna be you know, uh, really tough to improve anything and everything here. When your new building, and that's what we refer to it as, when a new building was built in the 50s, it's not a new building. <laughs> yeah, so we can do better and our children deserve better. It's going to be a challenge because there's we're landlocked. There's no way to, to take in more acreage. So we've got to be efficient in the way we design this building. Obviously a parish is so broad in its ministry to people, it must have access to other facilities like a social hall and things like that. And a place where 
not all the people in this parish are going to go to that school. They're not going to go, but that's the reality of it. They need faith formation also, which takes on a different concept, a different way of doing it. They, but they've as much right to it as the people in the classroom of Blessed Sarkin School. You know, in the last two years, Father Brandon has brought a lot of energy to the school and he started a number of programs to meet the spiritual needs of the parishioners, but there's no space for those individuals to meet. Uh, we have a CCD program for the young students that are unable to go to Blessed Sacrament. They have no space to meet in. When um, you have a reception, a small, intimate gathering, there's, there are no areas for them to meet in, uh, to gather, or just um, you know, a, a, an area after church where the, um, the, the parishioners can congregate. There's nothing. You walk out the church and there's, there are no areas. So we need a social hall. We need a small, intimate uh, place of, you know, to hold about 200 uh, people. And there's also aspect of adult education, adult formation of the people in the pews. All of that is part, an essential ingredient of parish work. How we take care of people preparing for marriage, how we take care of the grieving when we funerals. And you need facilities to do that also. And as I'm well aware, they're very meager and very short, having worked here myself, you know. I think change is necessary in any, whether it's in a church or a school or whatever, change is necessary. I think it is difficult to change, okay? Yes. And I think people fight change, but I think once it gets here and they see, you know, well this really isn't so bad or this really is better. You know, but sometimes it takes some nudging and pushing. As a pastor, my job is to really bring people to Christ and to teach them and to give them opportunities to pray, education. Uh, and so we have a pastoral plan every year with, that in lots of classes, Bible studies, catechism classes, holy hours, to have all those programs, and a lot of them are going to be going on at the same time, we have to have adequate space. I honestly believe that they, if we had a hurricane tomorrow and they had to teach out of tents, we'd still have the same quality education. But the infrastructure, the bricks and mortar are starting to crumble a little bit and we're gonna do what we can to, to make their job just a little bit easier so they, they have the things that uh, they don't have to worry about. Is the air conditioning working? Is the roof leaking? And they can go about uh, the business of educating our children. I really think it hasn't affected the school yet, but I believe it will in the future if we don't get things going. We have to really use every available square inch um, to do all the programs, both in our parish and in our school, that we need. This has caused us to go back to the drawing board three or four times, and that's been frustrating. But we have to do it because we have to keep looking for the best solution. And as a parent um, with a major project like this, you would want to make sure you know all the facts, um, get all your questions answered before you make a decision. And Father Brandon and the committee have done a great job of trying to convey that to the church congregation and the parishioners and the parents of the school that, you know, hey, this is what we're trying to accomplish. Please be open-minded. Please give us your feedback. And um, when you take that approach, I think more people are going to be very open-minded to want to con consider contributing and helping out with the, um, with the project. We've been very careful. We've had a lot of charrettes. Um, we've met with the parishioners. We've met with the uh, parents in the school. And we're going to be very careful to design this building to be here for another 100 years. It's going to be effective. It's going to be efficient. It's going to meet the needs as our, our um, forefathers that came in here and built this building, um, you know, over almost 100 years ago, they were very forward thinking. And we're gonna be forward thinking. We're gonna make sure that this building will meet the needs of children for, for the next 100 years. And I love to equate things like a garden and you plant seeds. So when Father did that with the mustard seed, it really touched me because, you know, I started a garden 10 years ago in our backyard and now we have flowers everywhere. You know, I'm very confident that the Lord's going to bless us. We've been praying our prayer and we've been uh, got these children praying our prayer. You get the children praying and good things start happening. Our campaign is called Seeds of Change, uh, Believe in the Legacy. 
And we need to believe that we can do this. We need to believe that um, the needs of these children are that important that now is the time. We need to believe that our parish is a very special place um, for our uh, parents to worship and we need to go ahead and do it, what, what will be necessary to make sure that this parish and this school are here for the next hundred years. It is so important that the entire parish, not just the parents who have children at Blessed Sacrament, but the entire parish community support uh, the expansion and the renovation of Blessed Sacrament. I keep thinking about the people that 70 years ago and 100 years ago invested in our school and our church and our parish community. Because of them, my children and my family have had this wonderful experience. So I kind of feel like it's our turn. You know, the good news is that we have wonderful, generous people here. And um, these are not just, you know, wants. These are legitimate needs for our parish and school. And I think people know that, and I think they've known it for a long time. And um, it's time. I would think that every, everybody that has a child that's gone here or is present going here or will soon be going here would one day want, you know, their grandchild to be here as well. And this isn't about today as much as it is tomorrow. We're investing in our kids' future, and that's so important. Education, I would imagine, is most important for most parents and uh, it's building something for the future that you can be proud of. Even after your kids are out of school, you can go back and look at the school and say, we built that. And it is an investment. Uh, no one has an, a lot of extra money, I'm sure, to, to just throw around. But if you really believe in something, you're willing to invest uh, in its future because you see that the product is worth the investment. I know I've been given a lot in this life. And I know that I owe God. I owe God a lot of what I have been blessed with. So I feel like if I don't give back, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. We know it's a sacrifice, uh, starting with me. We all have to, you know, have to sign on and do the best we can if we're going to be able to make it. I think it's a very ambitious uh, project, but uh, others have done it before the present generation, and I'm sure they'll come through as generations in the past have come through. Now, in this situation here at Blessed Sacrament, you're giving them the gift not only of education, but of a Catholic education. And that's a dimension that's kind of very special and, may I say, privileged. We call this um, Seeds of Change, and we've been praying for that. And um, I know that um, these seeds are gonna grow and they're gonna bear great fruit.